All right, so now that we've officially finished the um, responsive bootstrap lab series, we're going to start a new one, and that is going to be basically uh, WordPress. We're going to use a CMS, okay? So what is that, and what are we going to do? So basically, a CMS stands for Content Management System. Unlike the way that we have been creating our sites thusly far, the We've been like more or less hard coding them. We've been writing code out. And then um, when we write the code, you know, it, it appears over here. But we're manually writing each and every um, web, uh, web page, right? Uh, you know, our homepage, all of our sub pages. And as much as like, you know, we're also using Bootstrap as a framework in the last one, or we might be attaching other elements um, that have dynamic uh, components to them, they're still hard coded. And if we need to change anything, uh, we change, we make all of our adjustments. We do all the things we do basically through code, right? And don't get me wrong, you know, everything you're seeing here on my screen right now, this is also all code, but most websites these days are not really written that way anymore. Um, they don't really write the code. Not, not all, some still are, um, but not all of them are written that way. Most of them, uh, very few of them are written that way anymore. Most of them use some sort of CMS. And basically a CMS is, if you've ever used like Wix or GoDaddy or Squarespace, they have these interfaces that basically you can visually just change things and you add elements and you, you know, they have templates built in and you just put your components in and, you know, and it's all very graphical, right? Um, you're not really writing any manual code. Uh, what you're doing is basically you're putting your content in and then it generates uh, through whatever magic it has the uh, the code that you see. Uh, generally, it's PHP. So um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a CMS, and uh, that's kind of everything's kind of come to this point. Uh, in a weird way, at least as the way my feeling is, is that the first lab series I feel like is the most difficult. Then the second series is the second most difficult because at least you're working on the framework and you're using Dreamweaver to kind of help you write the code. Now we're going to be using this and basically it's, you still want to know how to write code because some of the stuff you have to manually write. So a lot of the things that I do that you guys see, uh, I don't have any examples here actually. Uh, uh, well, actually I do right here, this little thing animated. I write that through code, you know what I mean? And even making this thing pop up the way that it is, um, I have to still write HTML and CSS and JavaScript into the CMS. It allows me to do things that just, um, just a, a regular user would not be able to do. So if you ever see anything like that's interactive in there that you can interact with or um, stuff that's animated or even just the examples, you know, I have like, I'll have the code and then it says like browser example, that's all manually written by me, uh, which is honestly very time consuming. Um, but that's stuff that I've made uh, that I've, I've attached to this. Um, so there's definitely, you definitely want to know how to do the things that we've done. And even now, when you're looking at this, this web, my web page itself is made through WordPress, which is what we're going to use. Even this here, um, you know, it's writing HTML just as we would, would write it. But instead of you directly writing it, you're using a system that's writing it for you. And in the future, if you ever become a web designer, if this is a path that you decide to go down, you're going to want to know how to write HTML and CSS because you're not going to want to use the vanilla WordPress that they give you because you won't be able to really create the things that maybe your client or things that you want to as an artist create. Um, having that knowledge will allow you to basically expand and, and, and build all sorts of other things. So I don't need to feel like the things we've done are not useful. Trust me, I, I use them every day. Um, but they're, they're just a stepping stone. And now we're at this point. Okay, so let's get to this. So we're going to be using WordPress. And like I said, it's a CMS. It's more of a top end, more of a graphical user interface. And we'll be covering this in just a second. I'll probably make two videos, just describe this and then actually do it. Um, honestly, it's a lot easier. A lot of you guys are going to probably do it and be like, oh, this is so much simpler. Um, so these next four weeks are going to be way easier for you. So any back work that you've gotten at this point, you should catch up on. So um, CMS, like I said, is the main thing that people are using. They're using these graphical interfaces to put their, their content, their images, their text, their interactive components. 
Um, out of those, and this actually probably is not even accurate anymore, um, WordPress is about 25% of those. So at least a quarter of the websites that you see are actually made inside of WordPress. My guess is that that's probably gone up since I found that number. Um, so uh, WordPress is just kind of the main go-to uh, system of creating websites, okay? Now, there are, when you look up WordPress, you'll see two versions. You're going to see WordPress.com and you'll see WordPress.org. They're not the same thing, and it can be kind of confusing. So WordPress.com is a business, and what those are are typically, you can go on there right now. You can use it for free. You can go on there and you can start making a site, but your site is going to be a blog. So it'll be like, you'll just like make posts and you'll write things in there, but it's not gonna look like a fully featured website at all. It's also not gonna have a, a, a domain name. So if you look at mine, see how mine says teachmecone.flywheelsites? So that means I have a subdomain because it's inside of flywheelsites.com. I actually do own teachmecone.com, that was my old site, but when I was making this site, I didn't wanna lose my old one, so I'm going to eventually make this just teachmecone.com, but even now, mine's also a, 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 like that. So if you go to WordPress, I don't know what it is. Is it Blogspot? It might be dot .wordpress. I don't know what they call it, but you'll just get a subdomain. It won't be just, you know, awesome peanut butter sandwiches.com. Like you can't write that in there. You, you don't have that domain, okay? So it's limited in that way. It's going to look like a blog. Um, so it'll be like WordPress, whatever. I don't know exactly what it is, but um, the themes and plugins are very limited. They're only going to give you a select number, like just a couple that you can choose from. So it's yours is going to look like everybody else's. Um, right. It's only usable as a blog. It's very simple to set up, but it's also not very flexible. So you won't be able to install any like cool functions. You can't get to the code. You can't, you can't really elaborate on it. It's just kind of like this pre-canned, very straightforward it's good for a consumer but it's not really good as a web designer you can't really use it to make a website okay it is free so that's pretty cool you might have already done it before i remember back when i was in college they made us do it and i hated it but um that is wordpress.com so if you go to wordpress.com you'll see that it's still built on the same system as wordpress.org but it's just that's not what it's for they did actually start offering that they will host a site for you and then unlock all of the features using um, uh, inside of wordpress.com. Uh, I think they started that like two years ago or something like that, but um, uh, I've never used it. I don't know anything about it beyond that, um, but they will charge you for that. So like, then you're just gonna be paying the same thing that you would for anybody else. So I don't know, I wouldn't use them necessarily. There's lots of other um, uh, places to uh, upload your site to. Now wordpress.org, basically what that is, is that's more or less the, um, the, uh, the software that you're using in order to create um, your site, okay? So that is not tied to anything in particular. It's basically, it's, I don't wanna call it freeware, but you know, it's, it's an open, it's open source, right? So it's just code that's all over the place and everyone uses it uh, in order to create what they want. Um, and WordPress is written inside uh, in PHP, uh, which is kind of like, HTML, but like it actually allows you to create like actual programming code. So if you have any experience with it, meaning you can write functions and it have variable names and it's dynamic, it can take information and, and, and it uses a database and it has a whole thing, right? It uses other stuff like SQL and other things too. There's a whole bunch of computer languages that make WordPress work. Um, but it's fully dynamic site. You can put in all your own stuff. You can do like I did here. There's um, pretty much whatever you want to do, you can do. Okay. Um, but in order to use that, you have to either host the site on your computer, which is honestly not really, it's, it's not viable. Um, you would have to basically rent um, a server, right? Uh, rent a computer out there in the internet, the, uh, a place to host your site so there's all sort of like hostgator or bluehost or i use flywheel and there's a whole bunch of them um, that basically will host your site for you uh, and basically you upload your site to it you install wordpress onto their server and then you work on your website off of their computer from your computer but the files are all over on theirs and it's running wordpress but on their computer over there okay but you have to pay them a fee to 
do that, right? Because obviously they're not just going to give you that for free. So, um, and depending on how much you pay is how much bandwidth and how much space you get on their site and all the other, you know, other things you can install and security and all that other jazz. So that's WordPress.org. So you'll see the two popped up. We're doing WordPress.org, not WordPress.com because that's just chintzy. Okay. Now, the problem is, is that WordPress needs to be run in an online environment, which means we can't just like we have been, you can't just write code on your computer locally. It needs to be live. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to fake it. We're going to create a local, um, a local development environment on our computer. Okay. Now I alluded to it earlier, but the idea is that basically WordPress uses a bunch of different technologies, different, a bunch of different programming languages in order to create the site that you see in front of you. Okay. So, um, that includes, uh, uh PHP and SQL, uh, Apache, uh, well, this is my, so like a uh, bunch of different languages and stuff and all and each one of them handle a different aspect of the site okay so for instance uh, my sequel or just sequel in general um, is sequential language that is basically like a big sheet of just information and that that's just that's like your database that just holds stuff php is the stuff that basically runs everything um and then apache in this case although there's other ones as well i forget what they're using on flywheel now they changed it um basically is the thing that creates the virtual machine that makes it look like you're online all right so um there's a bunch of different options out there uh i guess i don't go through them here but that you can download and so you have to download all this different software there's MAMP, there's zamp there's wamp there's lamp a lot of amps uh and then there's other ones too and i can't remember what they are but there's basically a bunch of these systems that people have created to basically allow you to create a WordPress site, but on your computer locally, meaning, uh, you know, just on your computer, it's not on the internet. There's a bunch of different ways of doing that. Okay. Um, and so you would download the softwares and you would install them and you'd have them all working and you could work on a site locally. And then when you were happy with it, you could upload it onto a server if you wanted. Um, or what you could do is you rent a server and then you install WordPress and you just work from the beginning off of their site. But if you didn't want to do that, then you'd have to do it locally. And we're doing it locally, not because it's easier. I actually dislike doing it this way. It's much more difficult, but it's free. <laughs> uh, if you go online, then you would have to rent a, a, a server and you'd have to work uh, and you know, you'd have to pay like, I don't know, hundred bucks a year or something in order to get it to, to work. Right. And I don't want to charge you guys anything extra than what you have. So we're going to make a local environment uh, and then we will all use the same basic technologies and then you guys will be able to create a WordPress site on your home computer that won't actually be live, uh, but I can download it uh, and then run it on my local computer and then I can know that it's working. Okay, so there's a bunch of different options. We're going to be using local by flywheel. Okay, so local by flywheel is actually the, the thing. That's how I started out my site because um, I made my own WordPress theme and all that other stuff. Uh, I eventually moved away from that, but that's how I started out. Um, and basically what it does is it installs all of the stuff for you, installs the PHP and the SQL and the Apache. And, and it has a nice interface to create a new site. And it's it's um it's real straightforward. It has like a one button, a one button solution. It's It's very user friendly in the grand scheme of things compared to the other options that I've seen. So we're going to be using flywheel um, or local by flywheel um, because that's just, it's, it's an easy way of working. It's free. That's another reason why we're using it. Um, but that's what we're going to be using. So that's the next thing you have to install. It will, works on both Mac and PC. So that's not any kind of issue. Um, and if you're on a Mac, I'm obviously on a PC. You can still do your stuff on a Mac. It doesn't make a difference. It'll work cross platform. So that doesn't matter. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do is we're gonna using this local thing. Um, once we install it and we get that all working, then we're going to start going through and working on the other stuff. But what I want to do now is just show you how to install. It. So if you're on my website, you can click on this link. And when you click on it, close this out, it's going to pop open to here. And then it's going to say download, you are going to download it. I don't know if it makes you I don't think it does, does it? 
Maybe it does. Let me see. Windows. Yeah, it wants some stuff. And then you just click get it now. Um, and then what we'll do is it'll download the file. And then when after you download it, what you're going to want to do, um, just on the off chance, just to make sure that everything is fine, I would make sure that every all of your stuff... No, thank you. Okay. Make sure that everything that you're not using is off. Just turn everything off, uh, even your internet, especially your internet. Turn your browser off, all that other stuff. Just turn it all off. Have nothing open, right? Just make sure everything's closed. Then, if you do have antivirus software, like I have this one, this uh, AVAS or whatever, just go ahead and um, go ahead and just turn it off for like an hour or whatever while you install. Just because you don't want it to accidentally have some sort of like stopping something. Um, because in order to create this uh, this local environment for us to install, it needs to like penetrate the inner systems of your computer. Um, and if that might block it, which is its job to do, that's good that it does that, but you don't want that to happen. You might need to, again, depending on Mac or PC and all the other business, you might need to like, like there's the window security. So I might have to like turn that one off too. Um, I think that wasn't an issue last time I did it. I don't even think I turned this off, but just I want to make sure that it installs and that you don't have a weird issue. Because uh, if you do have a weird issue, it's going to be difficult for me to fix them from here. Normally, we have schools that we have computers at school and you would work there, and that's not that big of a deal, but obviously, that's not the case this time. So, we got to do what we got to do. All right. So, you're going to download it. Um, then, what you're going to do is you're just going to install it. It'll just install it as it where it was. Um, and then you're going to be ready to go. And then that's basically it. Uh, once that's installed, what we'll do is in the next video, I'm going to show you how to start making the web page. Um, but we're not going to do a lot. I just really, most of this week, it's just going to making sure that you guys get it installed and that you install the theme and the plugins. Um, and just making sure that the site is generally created. And then next week we'll get into it a little bit more. But like I said, this actually this class is actually going to get a little bit easier in the in the next weeks. Okay, so um, well, starting now uh, for the you know for the for the remainder of the semester, it actually is a bit of a simpler class. Um, yeah, so that's it. So uh, I'm going to end this video now, and in the next video, um, I'm going to assume that you have it installed, and then you would just open it up. And then once it's opened up, we would go from there. So, you know, it'll just be local like this. So in the next video, just have this open. So you just click on it. It'll pop open. Hopefully. Uh, and you'll see like a, a, a window here. And once it's open, uh, yeah, just watch the next video. So just install it. If you run into an issue, let me know. I'll see if I can try to walk you through it. Um, hopefully you don't run into any major issues. All right. Other than that, uh, so yeah, you'll just end up with, oh, I guess I'll install the update. Uh, you'll, uh, you should have it good. Okay, so see you in the next one.